Good morning. Welcome to the Goodwater Loop. This is a 26.2 mile loop trail in Texas. It is in the town of Georgetown, which is just a bit north of Austin. And the trail makes a loop all the way around Lake Georgetown. I am starting at Cedar Breaks Trailhead, which is a pretty common trailhead for people to start at because it's technically mile zero. So the mileage on the map and the mileage on the, the actual trail post that are physically on the trail all count in a clockwise direction from Cedar Breaks. For parking here, you can just Google Cedar Breaks Park and it'll bring it right up on Google Maps for you and take you right here. So you'll get to a T section and if you turn left, that will take you to the park and the little gatehouse there. If you turn to the right, it'll take you to a parking area. Now parking inside the park, you're going to need to buy a day pass per night to park in there. And there is a parking area right at the trailhead. Or if you park here outside, it's going to be free. There are several other trailheads you can start at. And the best ones for leaving your car overnight are going to be the ones that are higher traffic. Um, those ones are going to be Jim Hogg Park, Russell Park, Tejas Park, and then again Cedar Breaks where we're parked. We are up here to the top of the dam. We've come up this road behind me and over there is where we parked. So let's talk about this dam. This is a Rockville type dam and it was built for flood control. In 1913, 1921, and then for the last time in 1957, there were some really bad floods and killed a lot of people, did a lot of damage. So the decision was finally made to dam the San Gabriel River. The dam was built by the Army Corps of Engineers. They started construction in 1972 and they finished it 1979. And in 1980, the reservoir was officially named Lake Georgetown. Looking out here is the gatehouse where they control the water flow. And then down over here is where the water lets out. And Lake Georgetown supplies water to the town of Georgetown and Round Rock. So before they built the dam, the Army Corps of Engineers had their archeologists come out here and they did a really extensive study and did a lot of digs out here to learn everything there was to learn about the area before they dammed up the river and it was all flooded and lost forever. Let's go ahead and talk about what they found because this dam walk is a really long dam walk. <laughs> The dam is just right about a mile long. So let's talk about what the archeologists found because it's pretty cool. They found evidence of people in this area at least 10,000 years ago. In that area, back there, <laughs> 10,000 years ago. And those would be the Paleo Indians. They were a nomadic bunch and they would have come through here following large prey like bison, mammoths, stuff like that. About 5,000 years ago, we get into the Middle Archaic period, and that is where they noted evidence of the first non-nomadic bunch to come through, which means they weren't just stopping by, they put down and they stayed. And they found evidence of that group in the middens, and we'll talk about that more later when we get to that archaeological site. The next was about 1,400 years ago, and that would be the late prehistoric period and they found evidence of those people noted by the early bow and arrow, um, pottery, jewelry, stuff like that. But they weren't able to find anything about what those people were called, what kind of languages they spoke or anything like that. Then you get into our own historic period. And they did see evidence that some Apache and Comanche had been through here. But for the most part, it was the Tonkawa who lived here. In the 1700s, the Spanish explorers came through here 
and one of their priests named the river the Rio de San Xavier. So then, let's see, and then we get into the 1800s, and that's when the pioneers started coming through, and eventually they started calling the river the San Gabriel. This is what your mile markers look like. Hey, look, there's me. Hi! <laughs> I'm hiking this loop counterclockwise. And that is for several reasons. Well, mostly two. One is because I feel like this story is gonna lay out a whole lot better going counterclockwise. The other reason is because tomorrow in the afternoon, it's gonna be in the mid 80s and coming across this dam where it's exposed in that hot sun just doesn't sound fun. So I wanted to get that over in the morning. For me, the mile markers are not going to be counting up. They're going to be counting down. Pretty much telling me how many miles I have left to go. I have 25 miles left to go. <laughs> All right, so we came down the dam. Doo -doo 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 -doo, and then we turned in here. You can see this is a walking path if you're not blinded by the sun. Don't go that way, turn left. Because remember, you want to hike around the lake, not away from it. <laughs> okay, now here's the thing with this trail. <laughs> and, <laughs> and there's a sign that tells you to go this way for restrooms, but it doesn't say that's the trail. Y'all, this trail is not well marked. It's not blazed. So here it goes. This is the only time you're probably ever gonna hear me say this. Cause you know, I'm the one who preaches mapping compass. And I mean paper map, always have a paper map, but there are so many other trails that are not shown on the map. Download Gaia or All Trails or something to kind of help you navigate your way through here and know which way to go. Because <laughs> otherwise it's going to be hard to tell. These are the restrooms at Overlook Park. There is water, but this will be your very last potable water until Jim Hogg Park. is a cut through to Jim Hogg Park. I mean, I can see the campground loop, but I'm trying to figure out that it also takes you close to water. So that way, when you go to the park entrance, you don't have to walk all the way through here. All right, it looks like these campsites do have full hookups. So that's where you get your water from. Okay, going back to the trail. Anyway, I'll drop a pin at the cut through because this would be a whole lot easier than going into the park and walking down the road. All right, we are entering Jim Hogg Park and you can see there's a gentleman here getting ready to dump his camper's pooper. But on multiple forums, I have seen people make a note to say, don't get water from there the Austin Ridge Riders and the International Mountain Bike Association maintain this section of trail and the blazing will be fluorescent orange. You can't miss it. You saw when I passed the vehicles that were parked at the trailhead there. So there's trailhead parking. Again, inside the gate, you have to get a 
day pass and you can get these day passes online. There is also some parking outside the gate. It's a much smaller parking area, but you can park there. Okay. Mile marker 21. I have 10 more miles to go till Tejas. the things I wanted to mention about waters in Texas, at least around cities, is it can tend to be a little bit unreliable as far as the amount of mining, oil drilling, and industry, and everything else. But in a pinch, I think a little creek like this that actually has running water, which is most likely probably coming from some kind of a spring, I think this one I would trust. Here we are at one of the burned rock midden sites. This area at one time had middens. Remember when we were talking about those middle archaic people, the ones who were the first non-nomadic inhabitants? Well, these are some of the areas down in here where they camped. So they made these ovens, these earthen ovens, and they lined them with rocks and they would stay hot for like 48 hours. So I guess kind of like an old school crock pot. After they were done cooking, the rocks that had lined the oven would be fractured and they were unusable. So these were pretty much one and done. These burned rocks, they would take them out and throw them into piles. And over the years, the piles would grow bigger and bigger and bigger into these giant mounds that are called middens. So, when they started excavating the middens, they found they would also discard other things like broken pottery, jewelry pieces, stuff like that. Well, because of all the artifacts that were in there, looters came around and they absolutely destroyed the middens. So now we are at the crossing. There's a lot of people online and everything I've heard say that they can't seem to figure out how to get to the trail once they come off and I'm guessing it's when they're going clockwise because counterclockwise it's pretty easy to find. Anyway, you see the gatehouse right there? So in the parking lot out there, there's a sign that tells you to go to the trailhead. So if you come out in the parking lot and you're not sure where to go next, come through the gatehouse onto this side and then when you see the crosshatch on the street, that's heading you to your trail, which is right here. And that would be the easiest way to find this. I'm going into the campground because I need water. All right, walking through this path here, I can see over to the campground, so I'm just gonna cut through these trees. <laughs> so after I cut through the trees right over there, I came out and saw that there's a path. <laughs> <sighs> Looks like a damn mountain woman coming out of there with sticks all in my hair. After you come out of the path that's actually there, walk around the loop to the other side over there, and that's where the restrooms are. And outside the restrooms is a spigot that has potable water, and it's actually not very bad tasting. And I got a chance to use a flush toilet. What a luxury. <laughs> The only one that was open was the handicapped toilet, and uh, <laughs> my feet didn't touch the ground by a lot. I mean, you know I got stumpy legs, but geez. <laughs> anyway, the trail came through over there, and it started going down here. So when you see this cut off, that goes to the campground. 
Anyways, keep on walking. And as far as like, if you're gonna stay at any of these campgrounds, reserve your campsites online. Like I'm going to stay at Tejas tonight and I've already got a campsite reserved. So, it's a good idea. Alrighty. Hasta la trailhead I don't know how to say trailhead in Spanish. <laughs> feels pretty humbling because I am walking down road that is hundreds of years old. The natives who lived in the area would use this as a path for traveling along the river. And then when the Spanish explorers came in, they used this as a path to travel back and forth along the river. And then the pioneers used it. And at one time it was named, it was called Jim Hogg Road, but for the most part it was known as Booty Road. All right, we are coming into Walnut Spring campsite. This one is free to use. You can see there are picnic tables, beautiful spots to put some tents. There's more down there closer to the water. There are no restrooms and there is no potable water. So if you don't want to filter from the lake, when you're coming from either Tejas or Russell Park, make sure that you have enough water to camp and get to your next water source tomorrow. So, isn't that pretty? But I mean, can you imagine living here? Well, guess what? This spot at one time was where a home sat. In fact, two homes have sat here. The first one was the Spanish explorers had a house built here, a small home. But this right here is the remains of their well. It's very old and there's not a whole lot left of it, but this was the old well. The corrugated stuff, I don't know. It looks like something was put later because that would not have been in existence back then. So then later on when a more recent home was built in the 1800s, they put their own well in. And I'll show you where that is. At the very back. You kind of think they'd cover it. <laughs> but there it is. If you look here, you can see some foundation stones. Don't know if this was for a walkway or what. Oh, gosh, people are such assholes. So this was just a little square hole that I was gonna show you. So the thought process was that that was where a pipe went down. What a shame. I just don't understand people. I mean, this thing was so old. That breaks my heart. There's another one of those square holes. There's somewhere right in this area. Here it is. So it looks like that. Very, very pretty area. Imagine living here, but of course it would have just been river not lake here because pop quiz When was the dam built? If you said it was finished in 1979 you are correct You get a burrito People are coming talk to you later So we talked about how old this road is that we're walking down and it is called Booty's Road and it was named that because the um, first crossing is called Booty's Crossing and that's down at the base of the dam. There's a Booty's Crossing Park where you could go see that and then there's also um, a spring house there that from what I understand still flows water on a regular basis. The crossings were picked because they were in areas of shallow water 
and they had a firm limestone base so that way the covered wagons could get across easier. So, say you're scooting in your little covered wagon, you go across First Booty's Crossing, the next crossing you come to is going to be Russell Crossing. Remember Russell Park? It's right there in that area, but now under the lake. And then, of course, if you're going down Booty's Road, Russell Crossing would be Second Booty's Crossing. That would be the other name for it. And then you come to the next major crossing of the four major crossings, which is Box Crossing. And that's this right here. This one is not always exposed, but it has a little sign talking about stuff. So, this is Box Crossing, also known as Third Booties Crossing. Remember we talked about the hard limestone shelf that helped them get their covered wagons across? This is that limestone shelf. And you can see where the concrete structure is built on top of the limestone. If you take some time to look through the limestone, you'll see some pretty cool fossils. Like, look at these. I don't know if you can tell. And if you think that they look like seashells, you're right, because a long time ago, the Edwards Plateau was under the ocean. So we talked about the hard limestone shelf to get the covered wagons across. So what on earth is the deal? Ooh, wow, look at this shell. Look at this one. Ooh, isn't that great? So cool. So old. Sorry, I ADD'd out on you there. Okay, hard limestone shelf. What the heck is this big concrete thing going over it? Well, the uh, crossings were put in, like I said, during covered wagon time. So that's going to be 1800s. Well, what happened in the early 1900s? Ah, a lot of people started getting automobiles. And you've seen pictures of those cars, right? They got the little tiny bicycle tires on them. They couldn't get across the... Uh, limestone crossings very easily. So, instead, they started building these concrete structures over them. So like even Russell Crossing, which is under the water, had a concrete crossing on it. And I believe under the water there, under the lake, it still does. To stay on the loop, don't cross at Box Crossing. Whoop, this is your trail. And when the trail Y's up there, stay to your left. You want to stay closer to the uh, river. More burned rock middens. Another site. This is a campsite from the people of the late prehistoric period. Pretty cool. This crossing was named for Hayden Hunt and his brothers who owned the land here. Further down, they had a cotton gin and a corn mill, which are no longer there. But I did see a spot down there that looked like it could have been. Maybe it was flat enough and right by the water. And then I did see some kind of metal crunched up around it. It must look like long rebar or something. So anyway, to get to Tejas Camp, cross the actual Hunts Crossing, or Fourth Booties Crossing, or the West End Crossing for the Goodwater Loop. Are you confused yet? After you cross the bridge, Come to this side trail on your left. There are vault toilets. If you go over by the camp host trailer there, you'll see trash cans and a spigot for water. These sites have no electricity. They're primitive, but they do have a fire ring and a picnic bench. Anyway, 
I'm gonna go get my site, get set up, and give these feet a rest. Hey guys, I'm getting ready to break camp here, but before I took my tent down, I wanted to make a mention that even if you're in an established campground, still do a good Widowmaker check. So you can see I put my tent off to the side, and the reason is because that branch right there is broken and it's dangling and I don't know when it's gonna finally come down, but I didn't want it to happen when my tent was down there, so I put my tent off to the side. Okay, I'm gonna get my tent taken down. Sun's getting ready to come up and I'm gonna get on trail. Just remember I said behind the camp host trailer. So there's the camp host trailer. And this is your water spigot. This is your last potable water before Walnut Springs if you're hiking clockwise. And last potable water before Cedar Breaks if you're hiking counterclockwise. Trash cans. Oh, we know how us backpackers love a trash can. All right, now it's time to get off this beautiful path and get on some trail. There are several different points along that path where you can get on the trail. But we're picking it up right here. All right, you guys are gonna find that the south shore of the trail is really pretty. And it's so different from the north shore of the trail. It's almost like you're hiking in a completely different place. But anyway, you see how this goes uphill? It's not too bad. It's pretty short-lived. They've got some uh, stepping piles in place that kind of help you get up it. All right. Time to start climbing. I'm still trying to eat breakfast. Well, I guess I might as well take you climbing with me. the turn off for Sawyer Camp. So as we go that way. So as you can see, the ground is very sloped. So this place would be more ideal for hammocks because there really aren't any campsites here that aren't sloped. This campsite has restrooms. There's the restroom. <laughs> okay, let's went. <laughs> So this beautiful area we're hiking through is called Sawyer Hollow. And it was named for William Sawyer, who owned the land here. And the story is that in 1862, they enlisted in the Confederate Army. Later on, a year later, they were back home. He was with seven other guys. They were headed to Mexico and they had a thousand dollars with them because they were headed there to buy more cattle. Well, on the way, they were met up with a band of Confederate soldiers who accused them of being deserters. So the Confederate soldiers ended up hanging them and William Sawyer, I guess he had requested to be shot. So they shot him and then impaled him on a ramrod. So, next day some other people found them and buried all eight men together three years later in 1866 the guy who was leading the band of renegade soldiers was indicted for murder and highway robbery robbery because they took the thousand dollars that the men had on them unfortunately they were never found and never had to pay for their crime all right i am at mile marker five do you see it it's right there. <laughs> Further down the hill, I don't know if you can, that's old mile marker five picture right there. So it looks like at one time there was a trail reroute. So the reason I brought that up, let's look at the map. So here we are at mile marker five. Then you look just further forward 
the trail splits and one part goes over here to this trailhead. The trail, if you do go off that way, the trail does eventually meander itself back around towards Cedar Hollow camp, but it adds on a lot of mileage. So keep your eyes peeled for the trail splitting and stay towards the lake. All right, I think this is where we went wrong. I think we went down that trail when we should have been going that way. Okay. This is Cedar Hollow Camp. Anyway, I am not gonna go down there because I still have a drive to Dallas and I kinda just wanna get going. But Cedar Hollow Camp is similar to Sawyer Camp. It's free to backpackers. There's picnic tables, fire rings, no electricity, no potable water. And like Sawyer, it also has open air toilets because there's nothing like an open air poop between friends. Aww. After leaving Sawyer, and again we're hiking counterclockwise, you're gonna come to this thing. That is when we took the wrong route, this is where we came out of. So if you go that way, it takes you to that other trailhead that we were looking at on the map. If you go this way, you're on the good water loop. I don't know about y'all, but I kinda wanna stay on the good water loop. Hikers, this is Night Springs. It is just absolutely beautiful. This area I'm at is called Crockett Gardens, but I think the most interesting thing I found about this when I was researching all this stuff is that there is a dude named Mr. Gooch. <laughs> <laughs> Gooch. Anyway, his name was Benjamin Gooch, and he was the first person to own this plot of land. He bought it in 1955, and he had a flour mill built on it. Then in 1880, James Knight bought the land, and he ran a strawberry garden. And it was really interesting because nobody at the time had ever commercially grown strawberries in this county, so it was really cool. And then also, these springs behind me and over the fence were known as Knight Springs, named after James Knight. Then James Knight sold the land in 1890 to the Crockett's, and they owned the land from that point on, and I don't know who actually owns it right now. But the Crockett's operated this land as a commercial gardens. So it is just stunningly beautiful here. And this water, you could see it flowing down there and then it comes through here this is beautiful comes through here and then it goes over the side and that is Crockett Garden Falls and we're gonna head down there next this is the side trail that goes to Crockett Garden Falls it's got a little sign but don't forget this is a side trail so that up there is good water loop so here is Crockett Garden Falls now this used to look different last year. This whole big piece sitting in the front used to be attached up there. And when we had that really bad freeze at the beginning of this year, 2023, that thing accumulated so much ice that it fell. You can see it's very porous. So we, it's easy to understand how it broke off. As we talked about earlier, this water is coming from Night Spring up above where we were looking. Behind me is Russell Park. So remember at Box Crossing yesterday, we were talking about all the different crossings and we talked about one of them being Russell Crossing. Now if you can see over there, remember when we were over there? What? You don't remember? Well, shoot, let's hit up yesterday, Jet Girl. Hey, remember me? I'm Jet Girl from yesterday. Okay, so we were talking about Russell Crossing. So, if you look over here, I came down this trail. Russell Park is up there, right? And that's where I got water and sat on the toilet where my feet didn't reach the ground. And I went doo -doo 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 -doo, and came down the hill on single track trail. So now, 
all of a sudden turning into what looks like remnants of a road. This is the area of Russell Crossing. So the road would have come from the other side of the river over there and then crossed the river at a shallow area. And this was known as Russell Crossing. And it was named for Frank Russell and his family who lived there. They built their home in 1868. Their home also served as a postal substation. So another thing about that crossing is it was Russell Crossing and Second Booty Crossing, and it was also Jenkins Crossing. Frank Russell's daughter married Richard Jenkins, who later on took over the household and also took over running the postal substation there. So after that, it started becoming known as Jenkins Crossing. So, whew, a lot to keep track of, huh? All right, there's starting to be a lot of boat noise behind me, so let's wrap this up and I'll see you over at the trailhead. All right, well, I'm done with the loop and I am at the Cedar Breaks parking area. So I hope you guys will come out and hike this loop and enjoy it just as much as I have. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. I'm going to put a bunch of helpful links and some other information down in the video description. So make sure you check that out. And I'm not one to ask for subscribers, but it's okay if you do. Please do give me a thumbs up if you felt like this was a helpful video. Bye!